All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Cultivating Purpose and in Uncertain Times webinar. As we are waiting for people to um, join us today, I'd love to invite you to introduce yourself using the chat function at the bottom of your screen. So if you'll just share where you're from, as well as what inspired you to join our webinar today, and we'll get started in just a moment or two. Wonderful, so really seeing people from all over. Great. Wow, I even saw Brazil come up, wonderful. So fun to see everybody that's joining us here today. Mexico, Toronto, wonderful. So you can keep your introductions coming. Thank you so much. We are really excited about this webinar today. This is actually our first collaborative public webinar between Center for Healthy Minds and Healthy Minds Innovations that's being freely offered as a result of the generous um, donations from our donors. And so thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. Thank you for, thank you to our donors for making this opportunity possible. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to introduce you to our, um, to who we are, as well as our panel of experts that are joining us today. So, um, we are Center for Healthy Minds and Healthy Minds Innovations. Many of you are probably familiar with the work of the Center for Healthy Minds, whose mission is to cultivate well-being and relieve suffering through a scientific understanding of the mind. And the team at Healthy Minds Innovations is actually taking that science then and translating the science into tools to cultivate and measure well-being. And just to mention, at Healthy Minds Innovations, we actually have a program that features an app called the Healthy Minds Program. And what we do with our app is we actually guide you through step-by-step -step training your mind in qualities that are associated with well-being. And so one of those qualities is actually purpose, which is, of course, the, the subject that we're here to um, talk about today. My name is Stephanie Wagner, and I'm a trainer and program specialist at Healthy Minds Innovations. I'm also a board certified health coach, and I'm joined by a wonderful panel of experts today. We've got Dr. Richard Davidson. Richie, you can give a little wave here, um, who is going to be offering some uh, opening remarks in just a moment. We've got Dr. Palin Kezabir, who is a social psychologist and researcher at Center for Healthy Minds. And then we also have Jay Vidyarti, who is a collaborator for the Healthy Minds program, as well as a user experience researcher. And in the midst of um, this COVID-19 crisis, you know, many of us are just navigating things like fear and uncertainty and change. And we're all in new situations that we've never been in before. So if you're an essential worker, you're dealing with this on the front lines and all of the emotions and stressors that are associated with that. Um, others are, you know, working from home, some have lost their jobs. Um, others have lost, you know, income or spending time with their children all day long or even your grandchildren. So there's a lot going on, not to mention, you know, the anxiety that can get kicked up when we see what's happening in the news. And so all of these things can really contribute to feelings of isolation, stress, overwhelm, and more. And so more than ever, we're being required really to adapt to the very quickly um, and ongoing change of our situation. So today, we're going to be diving into the topic of purpose. And we're going to um, talk about helping you understand how to use it to cultivate well-being. Um, 
as well as to use it as a resource in your life um, during this time. So here's a, an overview of what we're going to be covering today. So our webinar is going to take um, an hour and we will start with some opening remarks by uh, Dr. Davidson. We're really excited about that. And then we'll move into giving you a taste of what it feels like to cultivate purpose by um, getting in touch with values during difficult times through a five minute guided meditation. We'll then move into talking about purpose as a constituent of well being. And then Palin's going to take us through meaning and purpose in psychology. And then Jay is going to take us through purpose and technology. Now, many of you are probably getting very savvy with using Zoom these days, but I just want to share a couple of things about the platform. You will be on mute during the presentation today. However, there will be some opportunities for you to interact. Similar to what I asked you to do at the very beginning of our presentation today, there will be times throughout the presentation where you'll be invited to use the chat function that is at the bottom of your screen. So you just click on the chat bubble, it opens up a text box, and then you'll actually be able to um, chat your responses to some questions that our panelists will be asking you throughout the presentation today. And there will also be an opportunity for you to participate in a poll as well. Unfortunately, due to the large number of, of participants on our webinar today, we won't be able to take questions, but we hope to be able to offer an opportunity to do that at a future event. So before we dive into our opening practice, I wanted to invite Dr. Davidson onto the scene here. So Richie, I'm wondering if you could offer our group here some opening remarks about the importance of training the mind, especially in light of these difficult times and why purpose is important from your perspective. Very good, thank you so much, Stephanie, and uh, thank you. Helen and Jay and Monica for all uh, of your contributions to this and to so much more. And thank you to all who are joining us. I've been just looking at the chat box and seeing uh, friends from all over the planet. Uh, and uh, it's heartening to see, particularly at this challenging time. We're being asked, uh, we, we, there's a phrase that our public health officials are using, which I think is an unfortunate one of socially distancing, but what we're actually being asked to do is to physically distance. But what we are observing here, and I think in many other contexts, is we can physically distance and socially connect at the same time. And we're very fortunate to be living in an era where technology allows us to socially connect uh, during a time when we must be physically distant. So um, uh, one of the, uh, uh, I think, important insights about the challenge that we face is to figure out uh, ways of uh, maintaining our social connection uh, and also recognizing that when we engage in uh, acts of physical distancing, we're actually doing that not only for ourselves, but we're doing it for the benefit of others. Uh, we're doing it so that we do not become viral vectors spreading this nasty virus. Uh, and particularly, we're doing it to help those who are particularly vulnerable, um, who may have pre existing medical conditions, who might be older, or whatever um, uh, increases their vulnerability. And so uh, when we feel frustrated by the constraints that uh, are being imposed on our lives, uh, it's helpful to remind ourselves why we are doing this. And it's really not only for our own benefit, uh, but rather for the benefit of others. And this brings us to purpose. Purpose is one of the four pillars of well-being in the framework that we have adopted in our center and in uh, our app, the Healthy Minds program, uh, it is a really key constituent of well being. We have done over the last 20 years a lot of research uh, that relates to purpose. And one of the really important 
findings from the scientific research is that having a strong sense of purpose is related to resilience. People who have um, a direction in their life, people who report that their lives are, um, uh, are uh, something more than just themselves, uh, those people show on robust objective measures uh, greater resilience. They have a increased capacity to recover from adversity. Uh, and so we expect that in response to a challenge like we're all facing today, um, finding that sense of purpose, finding our true north can really be beneficial in helping us to respond to this adversity. And one of the, um, uh, one of the simple ways of doing that is uh, to examine our motivation for why we are practicing physical distancing. And certainly one of the motivations is to be of benefit to others, to really serve the greater good uh, and protect those who may be more vulnerable. Uh, one of the other important components of purpose is um, being able to expand our sense of purpose to more and more of what we do in our everyday lives, to our kind of ordinary activities of everyday living. And again, one of the um, uh, uh, poignant opportunities that uh, is being afforded today since most of us are spending much more time at home than we might have ever spent or uh, spent in a long time. I mean, for me, uh, I, th this is the longest period that I have been at home without traveling in uh, about 15 or 20 years. Uh, and so uh, it is really giving me an appreciation for um, the little things that can be done around the house which really contribute to the greater good, to a larger sense of purpose, to serving others. Um, you know, even doing stuff like washing the bathroom floor is something I must admit I haven't done in a while, um, but I've been doing and actually enjoying. Uh, and so uh, these small things can be incorporated uh, and uh, really be part of our larger sense of purpose. So um, I, I'm gonna, uh, end this very brief introduction here. We have an amazing group of panelists. Um, Stephanie, Jay, and Palin are each extraordinary uh, in different ways, and uh, I think will beautifully uh, weave together uh, uh, a really fantastic offering. And we're very happy to be able to do this and to help in whatever small ways we can during this really challenging time. And let me end by simply wishing that you all remain safe and healthy uh, and that you uh, uh, have your loved ones uh, in a similar situation. And uh, I wish you all the best and we look forward to, and I personally look forward to checking in uh, much more frequently over the next period of time. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Richie, for those really inspiring words. And thank you so much for joining us for your, with your opening remarks today. Thank you. All right, so this is the territory that we're going to cover today during our presentation is really um, talking about purpose. And so we wanted to start with just a brief guided practice that represents purpose. And I know it can be really easy when you're on your computer to have multiple tabs open and you know trying to multitask. And so I just really invite you for the next five minutes to close those other tabs and just take a moment to be completely present and focused during this practice today. I'll invite you to just settle in and get yourself into a comfortable posture one that just feels natural, relaxed. And you can choose to practice with your eyes open or your eyes closed, whatever feels the best for you right now.
And as you're settling in, just begin to notice something in your present experience. It might be sensations in the body. Feeling of the breath. There's something else in your environment to just notice something that helps you to ground in this moment. And so I'd like to invite you to bring to mind a challenging situation that you have gone through previously, one in which you stayed true to an important value. So just try and see if you can identify that challenging situation and bring it to mind to the best of your ability. And once you've identified that situation, see if you can clarify one value that helped you deal with this situation. Maybe it was the courage to face the challenge or something like awareness that helped you stay grounded and present rather than getting caught up in the emotions. So just take a moment or two to explore how this value helped guide you through this experience. And now that you've identified this value, how might you apply it to what is happening in your life right now? So just take a moment to reflect on that. How might this change your perspective in this situation or how you respond to it? And when you're ready, you can simply drop the reflection and just notice what's happening in your body and mind as a result of doing this practice. All right, well, I would love to hear from you. Uh, in the chat box, if you'd be willing to share what value you identified during this practice today. Peace, compassion, bravery, hmm. integrity, empathy. Wow, love, courage, restraint, steadfastness. Wow, so many inspiring values. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Resilience. Thank you so much. You can continue to share 
for the rest of the group to be able to see here. So you just really had the experience of learning the skill of clarifying how you can use values during a difficult situation. And this is a skill that we're going to continue talking about as we continue on our webinar today. Now, many of you have maybe never even considered purpose or values that as a skill to be developed, but in fact they are. And well-being more broadly is a skill that can be both practiced and learned. And so Richie at the beginning of our, our um, call today was talking about this unique model of well-being that we have. And so what you see on the screen here is the Healthy Minds model of well-being. This insight, of course, comes out of the uh, research that's been done at the Center for Healthy Minds. And this model features four pillars of well being. You can call them pillars or constituents, which are awareness, connection, insight, and purpose. And these pillars are all trainable, and there is science that links them to being beneficial to well being. And so, of course, our, our, our webinar today is focused on purpose, the, the final, being, the final uh, constituent of this well-being model. And when we begin to train our mind and purpose, we begin to uncover qualities that give us a sense of contentment and meaning in our lives that does not depend on external circumstances. And this is really important, especially in the midst of this sort of immense uncertainty and other challenging emotions that we're facing right now. So before we turn it over to Palin to talk a little bit about the psychology of, of meaning and purpose, I just want to define what we're talking about when we talk about purpose here. So essentially, purpose is infusing everything that we do with meaning. So, you know, normally when we think about purpose, we think about doing special activities that sort of help us express our deep values, like spending time volunteering or spending time with our family. Training our mind and purpose actually allows us to infuse even our most mundane everyday activities with a sense of what's important to us so that each interaction, every email, every dirty dish, even every dirty diaper actually could be um, greater opportunities to sort of express um, and be guided by this greater sense of meaning. And as you're going to hear later, this doesn't mean that we are guided by one single purpose. There's more complexity and richness that can be found in this exploration. So I'm going to put up a poll here and I'd love to invite you to weigh in on how often you reflect on your values and purpose. So I'll just give the poll a minute to populate here. You'll be able to choose from three responses, never, sometimes, and daily. So Monica will put up the poll here. Okay, so let's go ahead and give you an opportunity to weigh in. So never, sometimes, or daily. All right, we'll just take about five more seconds here. All right, so we have, wow, so we've got the majority of the people who weighed in on the poll sometimes reflect on purpose, some daily, um, and some never. So great. So sometimes seems to be the more, the more common response here. So in order to exit the poll, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to tap that little red circle on the upper left hand corner of the box that is showing on your screen right now. All right, wonderful. 
So when we practice um, training our mind and purpose, there are essentially three things that we're doing. So the first is we define what's important to us. And we do this by clarifying our values. And so you think back to that guided practice that we did just a moment ago. This is an example of how you got in touch with sort of understanding one or perhaps even several of your values. And when we get clear then about these values, we can then live in a way that's aligned with these values. And so this is when our actions and our life can embody this, this sense of purpose. And then sort of finally then connecting with our higher purpose is then when we are able to get in touch with something that's sort of greater than ourselves. So for example, something like being altruistic or helping society at large. And in fact, Palin's gonna talk a little bit more about the importance of sort of this kind of transcendent um, sense of purpose. And so these are areas that we don't normally think about um, as it relates to well-being. And so through the Healthy Minds program, what we're doing is we're guiding you step-by-step -step through practices and reflections to get clear and then this clarity can, of course, help to infuse our, inform our actions so that we can infuse everything that we're doing with a sense of meaning. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Palin, who's going to join me here to talk more about the study of meaning and purpose in psychology. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephanie, and thanks to all of you for being here today. So uh, what I would like to talk a little bit about is the study of meaning and purpose in psychology. And when um, we look at who started this uh, in modern psychology, the name co that comes up is Viktor Frankl. Uh, some of you might have heard of him, some of you might have uh, read uh, his books such as Man's Search for Meaning, but Viktor Frankl was an Austrian psychiatrist and he was in a, um, he was in a Nazi concentration camp, he was a Holocaust survivor and um, in his work that was inspired quite a lot by his experiences in uh, Nazi concentration camps, he argued that humans have a will to meaning, will to meaning, which means that humans have a striving for um, finding meaning in their lives. Um, let me just... Uh, I'm trying to advance my slides. Okay, wonderful. Um, so he argued that striving to find a meaning in our lives is a primary motivational force for ourselves. Um, so before him, Psych, uh, psychologists or philosophers, they had said that humans, for example, have a mean, mean, uh, will for pleasure or will to um, power, but he argued that actually um, he, uh, the will to meaning is a more powerful um, motivational force for people. So he argued that when we cannot fulfill our um, need for meaning in life, it creates an existential vacuum. And this existential vacuum is very painful. It's painful, it leads to lots of um, psychological um, dis-ease, and it also uh, leads to lots of destructive or self-destructive behavior. So people, they, they get depressed when they cannot fill this this existential vacuum or they can resort to violence or addictions. Um, so for him, finding a sense of meaning in life was a it was a it was a must to experiencing well-being in life. And since him um, psychologists have been studying meaning and purpose and their findings seem to support his conclusions. So what we know from research um, that asks people about how much sense of meaning they experience in their lives and then looks at the different outcome variables in their lives, especially related to well-being, what we find is that um, we are seeing lots of um, positive outcomes with, uh, with um, sense of meaning. So. If we can advance the slide. Yes, so 
what we see is that a uh, sense of meaning and purpose in life is closely related to happiness, life satisfaction, experience of positive emotions, hope, and self-esteem, and also, very importantly, health and longevity. Now, um, outcome variables such as longevity or uh, mortality, they are very compelling in, in um, science because um, unlike self-reports, they cannot be faked. So, and it's a very clear cut um, outcome variable. So when we see that um, people who, have, who report a higher sense of meaning in their lives also live longer, um, that's a very powerful uh, statement of this, uh, of meaning's importance um, to well-being. And on the flip side of this, uh, we see negative associations with um, all sorts of undesirable outcomes, um, including um, addictions or substance use and also suicidality. So, what this brings us to is, um, okay, we do see that well-being, for well-being, meaning is crucial. It's not even an interesting question anymore, whether or not a sense of meaning is important to well-being. We know it is, undeniably. So then our next question is, where can we find meaning? What are the sources of meaning in our lives? And maybe at this point, um, what you can do is, again, go to the chat box and um, type down for us to see what are the largest sources of meaning in your lives? Where do you find most meaning in your own life? So if you could share that with us. Okay, I'm seeing helping others, nature, faith in God, friends, relationships, wonderful family, work, compassion, art, service, oh, just beautiful, fitness, volunteering, all sorts of beautiful, beautiful responses, music, children, learning new things, that is so great. Thank you so much for sharing this. So these responses that you are sharing actually um, re reflect what research also has been showing over and over. When people are asked about the main sources of meaning in their lives, the responses that come out um, oftentimes uh, include relationships, close relationships, by large, this is the largest uh, source of meaning for people, it turns out. Relationships, family, those close bonds with, um, with children or friends or um, other people or humanity in general, uh, but also work, um, contribution um, to others through work or through other ways of service, such as volunteering. Um, another source of meaning, it turns out, uh, is um, the self-transcendence. So it can be um, God or religion, it can also be spirituality, um, but also um, nature, for example, things that inspire a sense of awe in us, they have been demonstrated to be um, sources of meaning. Also um, finding beauty in the world uh, through like art or music, those have also all been shown to be um, sources of meaning for people. Now, the important thing here is to recognize that meaning is found in connecting and contributing to something beyond the self, beyond the self. So when people experience well-being through finding meaning in life, it typically comes from transcending their selves. So not all sources of meaning are created equal or not all sources, all, uh, all sorts of values are created equal in terms of bringing uh, fulfillment and enduring well-being to us. Research finds that the sources of meaning or the kinds of um, values that bring more enduring well-being are about transcending to the self, uh, because the self, it, it seems, is a poor site to find meaning. We see over and over again that um, self-absorption, um, self-obsession, or having purposes related 
immediately to the self and its benefits, especially at the, ex uh, at the expense of others, do not seem to contribute to well-being um, as much as sources of meaning or values that are other-oriented or that transcend the self. Okay, wonderful. So, um, moving forward, um, how about finding meaning in difficult times? Um, we said that um, meaning uh, comes from transcending the self, contributing to something or connecting to something uh, larger than ourselves. How can we do that in difficult times? Now, the first thing to realize, um, and again, something um, expressed uh, beautifully by Viktor Frankl um, is that life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. So he, Viktor Frankl, based on his experiences um, in the Nazi concentration camp, um, he argued that even if we have the worst circumstances in life, if we can find or create some sort of meaning, some sort of um, redemptive experience from this, then we can we can find uh, we can find resilience, just as Richie um, mentioned at the beginning of our um, webinar, and he talked about the ultimate of human freedoms. The ultimate of human freedoms is responding to circumstances our own way. He said anything can be taken from a person, but not his ability to respond to the circumstances in his own way. And if we can find some meaning in suffering, in difficult times, in, in uncertain times, if we can find some value, that will help to ease the suffering to some degree. And okay, if we understand that, if we understand that finding some sort of well value or meaning during these times will go a long way in helping us, how can we do that? How can we do that? And what I would suggest is that we can ask ourselves some questions. We can meditate about or we can journal about questions such as what important lessons or positive meaning can I find in this experience? What redemptive quality? So I would believe that for the vast majority of us, when this is all over, there will be some things that we will look back and say, oh, you know, that was actually really good. That part I'm actually going to miss a little bit. So what are those parts of this experience? If we can notice them now and cherish them while we are going through this, that is going to, again, um, soothe our anxieties and will we'll go a long way in making this experience somewhat more bearable for us, right? And another question we can all ask ourselves is, how can I grow this, grow from this? You know, we should, as they say, we should never waste an ex waste the opportunity to learn from a crisis, right? Um, what can we learn from this? How can we grow from this? So one way to grow from this would be working on our on on virtues, cultivating some virtues such as hope or courage or compassion. And um, if we found in ourselves to um, means of cultivating these virtues, these wonderful human qualities during this difficult time, it would not only benefit us now, but it also would benefit us in the future. Um, and that would be a, a, a great outcome to come, uh, to come from all of this. So before I uh, end and uh, turn, the, turn the stage over to Jay, what I want you to what I want to remind you of is this. Meaning is all about finding value and connecting to our values. So the more we value things, the more meaning there is out there for us. If we value other people, if we value um, every moment of life, if we value what others do for us, um, 
if you value how everybody else is contributing um, to, to this difficult time. And especially if we value our potential to contribute during these difficult times, then we are going to experience um, meaning and um, and hopefully that will make it all easier for us. So with that said, I wish you all um, health and um, equanimity during this difficult time and I turn it over to Jay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Palin. And I want to mm -hmm. say I know that I'm seeing some questions come up in the chat around getting um, access to this information that you shared. And so just a note for participants that we will be sending up a, a follow up email with both a recording of this presentation as well as some of these key things that have been shared by our, our expert panel. So thank you so much, Palin, you. for your presentation. And so with that said, um, I'm going to invite Jay then onto this onto the scene here. Jay has been a uh, collaborator um, for the Healthy Minds program. And um, we're really excited about him to talk about the intersection of well being and technology. So I'll turn it over to you, Jay. Sorry about that, I was muted. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, and this has just been amazing. I've been watching the chat and really just blown away by how connected we are around the world right now and all the beautiful things that are motivating you and, and, f and helping you find meaning in life. It's really just beautiful to be here. Um, yeah, so it might be tempting to think about purpose and values with kind of an image like this, sort of a metaphor of sailing into the unknown with all the uncertainty out there. Um, you know, we're not fully in control. The wind is kind of something we have to harness. And in some ways, this is a really beautiful metaphor because even in a storm, sailing can be very difficult. You've got to change your tack. You've got to raise your sails. You've got to tie those knots. You've got to swab the deck. You got to live in close quarters, which seems really relevant today. Um, and it can really help you manage that if you have an idea of the big destination that we're sailing into the unknown, into the new world, and we're trying to get somewhere. Um, and this is a really great metaphor for how everyday life can be infused with purpose. But the one aspect of values and purpose that we don't always bring forward is that life isn't just sort of one journey, right? There's lots of journeys. Sometimes you need to cargo people around from one place to another. Sometimes you need to go pick up supplies. And I think something you've heard today, and I really want to reinforce, is that there's many different areas in your life, and they can all have different values related to them and different purpose related to them. And that's really important to remember, because a lot of the self-helpy stuff suggests you need to find your passion, and then everything will make sense. And what we're really saying is that purpose is already here. You just have to clarify and see that it's already here. And let me give you an example. Um, can I advance the slides here? I don't think I can. So Stephanie, could you advance the slide for me? Thank you. So it's not necessarily a big grandiose thing. Right now I have moved my, my one-year-old son and my wife, we've moved out of our home in downtown Toronto to get out of the city. And so we're living in my brother's house where we are four adults, two babies, one and two, and four cats all in a house together. So in some ways this has been a silver lining, of course, we, we're quarantined together. Um, in other ways, it's been challenging because we are this many beings in a house. Uh, and we, of course, had the usual conflict that comes up. Who's doing the dishes? Who's doing the chores? How do we get all this stuff done? And in the moment we started going down the path, our first instinct was maybe we can find like a schedule. So when, uh, Jay will do the dishes on Tuesday, so-and-so will do the dishes on Thursday, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then I took a moment to really reflect on the purpose and the values here. Like in, in my sort of daily practice, I sat down and I was like, what are we really trying to do here? We're not actually roommates. This is a temporary situation. Also, there's a lot going on. We're all really tense. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty. And really the purpose here was to make sure everyone's okay. The values were family and connection. So I came back to the group and I said, instead of a schedule, why don't we just create a, a check-in once a day for really open communication about how we're feeling, just complete vulnerability and honesty to say, do you feel in balance or out of balance? Do you feel like other people aren't pulling their weight? And so we did that instead and it worked out really well. 
And I think this is a really great example for three reasons. Number one, it's not some grandiose life mission to save the world. It's literally doing the dishes, right? And purpose is still relevant, right? Number two, the idea that I was able to connect with values and purpose allowed me to make a more skillful action in the moment. Um, and then the third kind of bonus was instead of when I'm doing the dishes thinking, oh, it's Tuesday, it's my day to do the dishes and I have this to do and I have that to do and blah, 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 blah. Instead, I know that yesterday I had a, had a sort of conversation with my family and they told me how stressed they were. And so when I'm scrubbing that dish, I'm full of care, I'm full of love, I'm doing this to take care of my family as opposed to just clean the dish. And this is what we've been talking about. The larger purpose, even in cleaning a dish, is there and can transform the way you relate to everyday life. And there's, there's a sort of plurality here. Um, and so what I really wanna, oh, hey, I do have control of the slides. Do I? Yeah, I do. <laughs> cool, okay, so what I really wanna talk about is that in the modern world, this is more relevant than ever. We live in an ocean of information. Much of the world is designed with specific motives in mind. This is a picture of the Gardner Expressway in Toronto, which is where I live when I'm not in quarantine. Um, oh, lost my slide here. Where do we go? There we go. Um, and basically what we live in is an attention economy. So I wanna draw your attention to the yogurt company that's advertising on the billboard on the right. And I want you to think and reflect, what why do our corporations pay so much money to put their message on a, on a billboard? What are they really buying? Why are they sp spending so much money just to put a message out there? And you might think, oh, well, it's brand, it's marketing, whatever. But if you really dig down to the kind of basic elements here, what they're buying is they're buying the attention of everyone who's driving by on this highway. The Gardner Expressway in Toronto gets a, more than a million people every day going by this billboard. And so Liberté, the yogurt company, is buying attention. That's what we mean when we say the attention economy. And this is uh, more relevant than ever, and it's exponentially more severe in today's world, where everyone is competing for each other's attention, whether you're a large brand or just have a YouTube channel or running a webinar, everyone is competing for each other's attention. And the platforms are so intimate. They're in our pockets. We're, we're basically cyborgs. We've got these internet connected technologies in our pockets at all times. And they're designed to optimize the amount of time we spend on them. They're designed to optimize our clicks. And the media on them are designed to attract us, whatever it takes, whether that's misinformation or manufactured outrage. The science is young on this, but it's showing that it does have an effect on our mental health and well-being. So what I'm basically saying here is that in the modern world, we're so hyper-connected that we can either learn to sail or we can let the waves take us wherever they will. And that's really, it's kind of a two-way street. And if we let the waves take us away, we sort of lose connection with ourself, our authentic sense of purpose, our authentic values. We lose connection with each other and we end up just getting pushed around by the water. And what purpose and values is really about is learning how to sail. So the technologies you use are now a part of who you are. We are connected in this virtual, like collective consciousness in some ways. So in the modern world, bringing intentional purpose and values into your relationship with technology is critical for well-being in today's world. Um, I think it's even more relevant in this crisis that we're facing because we're in quarantine and we're stuck in these rooms and really we have nothing much to do but look at our screens. Um, I've been in a space for a while and I've been talking about mindfulness and mental health and well-being and all this sort of stuff. And I, what I find is people often compartmentalize their lives so that they're a certain way when they're practicing mindfulness and then they have nutrition values when they're eating and they, they come a certain way when they exercise. And then when technology arrives, there's just no limits. It's just a totally open relationship. So what I would say, it's not only a, a requirement to include technology in your thinking about your personal well-being and your purpose. I'd say it's almost a prerequisite in the modern world. We can basically let technology push us around, let it use us, or we can choose to bring intention to it and master it. There's no middle ground unless you retreat to the mountains. So I wanted to actually, um, oh, change jump the slide here. I wanted to actually invite you to make a change in this moment, because you can just attend a webinar, but you can actually think about what can I can do here. So the first thing I want to do is open up another chat exercise for us here. And this time I want you to share a little bit about how you've been managing your own relationship with technology and media 
any tips or tricks that you might be using to help manage the fact that there's this flood of information around us, especially in this quarantine crisis where the news is just everywhere. So what is it that you're doing? I'm seeing Zoom dance rooms. What a great start. <laughs> we should have a Zoom dance party right now. Meditation practices, no news before noon, scheduled times, restricted media, turning off the TV, body awareness, another Zoom or another, Zoom, or another uh, limit of technology, yoga online, only reading the news a certain time of day. So there's a lot to be learned from each other here. There's a lot that we actually can see and look at through this chat and actually see incredible ideas. I encourage you to keep sharing. I'm going to actually share some examples from my own life and from others. Um, so let's jump to the next slide here. So the goal here is we tend to do some of this stuff. Maybe we don't, maybe we have no limits on our technology, but if we really connect with our purpose and values, we can let that guide an intentional change in our lives. And some of this is related to the values that you may have reflected on in the guided practice in this webinar, where you realize, oh, we sort of jumped ahead here. Stephanie, if you can just control the slides, I'm, I'm gonna stop controlling and you can go back to the examples, please. Thank you. Um, so let's say you value rest and sleep. And so you feel like technology is disrupting your sleep and you wanna prioritize sleep as a foundation of well being. One rule that's been really helpful for me is I, I allow no internet in my bedroom whatsoever. Um, and that just allows me to make a clear intentional decision about bedtime and not actually look at the screens before bed and also not wake up to social feeds or news feeds or anything like that. Another thing is, uh, as people shared in the chat, time limiting your personal screen time. So not allowing yourself to look at screens at certain time can be very, very helpful. And these are kind of intentional rules to help you build habits. Let's say rest and sleep isn't the issue, but you feel like technology is getting in the way of family and connection and personal relationships. Something you could try is no technology at the dinner table. This is really great for families with kids. Something I do in my life is I keep my phone tied to the charger when I'm at home. So I have to actually walk over to my desk to use my phone. And that prevents me from becoming like a couch zombie where I'm just kind of scrolling through my feed for hours sitting on the couch. Um, in this modern quarantine situation, a daily intentional social phone or video call to connect with people can be really powerful. Let's say you value awareness and focus and you feel like technology is kind of fragmenting you and you want to stay present in your personal and professional life. There are tools out there to help you track your phone use and be aware. Um, you can try using technology to train your awareness using mindfulness apps, well-being apps like the Healthy Minds program. There's journaling apps or you can use a paper journal. Um, you can limit access to certain websites. So I use a tool called Stay Focus and that only allows 10 minutes of Twitter every day for me. I'm, that's my absolute maximum. And that's been super helpful through this uh, pandemic situation. Um, removing certain apps from your phone. This is something you can do right now during this webinar. Um, you can pull up your phone and say, listen, I'm just going to erase Facebook from my, app, my phone. I'm going to erase Snapchat from my phone. Maybe I'm going to erase email from my phone. And I'm going to actually only access those from my laptop so that I can't pull my pocket out, pull them out of my pocket and just look at them anytime. There's also things like break timers when working. That's been really helpful for me because I tend to just zone in for hours and then realize at the end of the day that I'm exhausted. And I wanna take you through another example um, of mine here, which is disabling notifications except phone calls. So if we go to the next slide, Stephanie. This is my phone. And basically I realized that the dings and the blips and the bloops and the banners were all completely fragmenting my life. So I've completely disabled the notifications from my phone. The only thing that will make a sound on my phone is an actual real-time phone call. The only thing I ever see on the home screen is my music player. Um, and I actually only have a couple of apps that are allowed to make notifications. They're not able to send any sounds, not able to send any banners. They're in a single group, which you can see on the right here. So in that center image at the bottom where you see the red number three, that little circle with the red number three is the only place on my phone's home screen and in general, where I can see that something's waiting for me. And what this does is I never get interrupted by my phone and I choose to pull it out and use it intentionally and check whether I have something when I have a moment, but I never let it interrupt me. But I wanna be clear, this is because I value presence and I saw that as an issue in my life. The idea here is by connecting with your purpose and values, 
you might find your own strategies and habits for maybe some of these or some in the chat have aligned with you. But let's say you really value productivity and efficiency and you have a job that requires you to be responsive all the time. Maybe you need your notifications and that's part of your value and purpose. That's fine as well. But the idea is to connect with something authentic and not only manage your morning ritual and your evening ritual, but also managing your technology habits from an authentic sense of your values and a sense of purpose. So we'll go to that last slide here. Um, so I've been writing about this stuff for a while, since about 2016. Um, been writing on my blog and talking about the attention economy and attention activism. And I was on a podcast recently and someone asked me about the sort of COVID-19 situation and they were kind of like, kind of doing like a little gotcha. They were like, well, you know what? Now that we're all locked in our rooms, joke's on you. We all need to be on our screens all the time anyway. So there's no point in managing a healthy relationship with technology. We can't even leave the house anymore. And I pushed back and I said, you know what? I think in a quarantine situation, or if you're on the front lines in healthcare, if you're facing economic situations, or you're just you know, freaking out about this pandemic, your relationship with technology is more important than ever. You are locked in your home with these screens, or you're kind of out in the world and working in a hospital, and then you're checking your news feeds and you're getting all this crisis information. If you dive into the infinite ocean of information without any clarity around your purpose and values, it's just gonna become this aimless habit, this scratching of an itch that absorbs your time as you infinitely scroll. And worst case scenario, you might actually get a distorted view of the world. You might get a distorted view of this pandemic about what's really happened, right? But if you have clarity around your purpose and values and you manage that relationship with technology, it can really empower you to do incredible things while maintaining some distance so that you don't get pulled away and you don't get lost. And this distinction between not having clarity on your purpose and values and just sort of wandering aimlessly into the world of technology versus having clarity and being more intentional, it's true about technology, but it's true about life. It's true about your relationships. It's true about your career. It's true about your hobbies. It's true about taking care of your kids. The, this purpose and values element that Palin was sharing the science about, this, the search for meaning, um, this is so vital to maintain a sort of healthy balance and well-being, even when it gets really stormy and the waves are choppy and it's hard to know where you're sailing and you get overwhelmed like in a crisis like this. If you can stay true to some sense of value that's already here, you just have to see it clearly, you can really drive a lot more well-being and purpose in your life. And I really do believe it's kind of a prerequisite in the modern world. So with that, thank you very much. I hope you're safe and well. If you're not safe and well, my heart goes out to you. I hope you can find some balance and I hope things return to normal as soon as possible. Um, it's been really wonderful to share this time. And I really do encourage you to take some action as a result of this webinar, to take a look at everything that's been discussed and remember, it's not out there somewhere, it's already here. So take some action to just see it more clearly and bring that into uh, sort of infusing your everyday life with a sense of purpose and values to really benefit yourself, those around you, and ultimately the world, because we need more of this stuff in the whole world. So thank you so much. I'll turn it back over to Stephanie right now. Thank you so much, Jay. I, that just such relevant um, content, you know, given the time I've had so many people approaching me and just sharing concern that, you know, post pandemic, that they're going to be more addicted to their devices than before. So this just really gives us some practical tools to be able to support having a, a more mindful and healthier relationship with our technology. So thank you for that. My pleasure. All right, so we've really covered a lot of territory today, uh, but just to review the tools, you had a practice earlier where we got in touch with using values during a difficult situation. And then Palin really guided us in some, some reflection questions that we can use to help guide us in finding meaning during these difficult times. And then Jay really shared a lot of content around finding meaning in the midst of daily life, but then also meaningful use of technology. So I would love for you to share in the chat box, what are you inspired to try on from our webinar today? I'll just give you a second here. Yeah, controlling and limiting notifications. That's been huge for myself in my own, in my own relationship with my phone. Great. Yeah, lots on technology here. Wonderful. Purpose in daily life. 
Yeah, so many great takeaways. Thank you so much. So I'll just allow you to continue to do that and want to fill you in on some ways that we can stay in touch um, as we move forward from this webinar. So one of the things is that I just want to make sure that I thank Jay and Palin and Richie for your lovely participation and presentations today. Super thoughtful. Love this exploration of purpose with you all. And I also want to express, express immense gratitude to, um, on behalf of CHM and HMI, for the COVID specific resources that we've been able to offer the public due to the generous generosity of our donors. And so this has really allowed us to provide support for people who are really suffering during this time. We're going to send out a follow-up email, as I mentioned before, where there will be the recording of this webinar, as well as some of the things that were discussed on the presentation today. We're also doing some live practices every week via YouTube Live. We've got a rotating group of trainers who are leading these practices that are happening just about every weekday, Monday through Friday. So you can check our schedule. We're posting it regularly on Facebook. So Healthy Minds Innovations has a social media presence both on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And so you can discover more about these guided practices and plug in wherever it may feel inspiring to you. As I mentioned earlier in our presentation today, we also have the Healthy Minds program app, which is also freely offered to individuals as a result of the generosity of our donors. So we encourage you to check it out, start training your mind in these four qualities of awareness, connection, insight, and purpose that were discussed earlier on the presentation today. And yeah, I just wanna take a moment again. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Loved hearing all of your sharing. Hopefully you found this beneficial to you in navigating the difficulty that we're experiencing right now. And just to echo Jay's sentiments, really wishing you some ease and resilience and health um, and, and yeah, making it through these, these challenging times with a greater sense of purpose and meaning. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much.